Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. As I've been thinking about mercy, several aspects of this quality have come to mind. My first thought is that mercy is love in action. It springs from love. To be merciful requires the one showing mercy to be able to put themselves in another's shoes, to feel empathy for the other. That mercy is a quality pertaining to relationship. Some of the other Beatitudes could be personal, individual qualities, part of one's character, say meekness, humility, or purity of heart. But to be merciful or to receive mercy involves another person. It is about how we interact with others. And to receive mercy, we must first understand our need, often including our need for forgiveness. We must acknowledge our sin. And in order to receive mercy, not merely as the cessation of a painful experience, but as a blessing, it requires a thankful response. And of course, all these different facets of mercy are interconnected. In fact, interconnection or balance is fundamental to the way the giving and receiving of mercy is portrayed in the Bible. In Jesus' teaching that we call the Beatitudes, the blessing of mercy is unique in that it rebounds upon itself. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. All the other blessed qualities lead on to contrasting, perhaps unexpected results. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But in contrast, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. In order to receive God's mercy, we ourselves must be merciful. The dictionary defines mercy first as compassion or forgiveness towards someone whom it is within one's power to harm. So often we cry out to God for mercy and forgiveness. Perhaps even when we have distanced ourselves from God. Or even those who have seldom, if ever, given God a thought, still have an instinctive understanding of the nature of God, that he is merciful. It is often when we are desperate and have nothing within ourselves to meet whatever we are facing, that we first cry out to God. As the songbook says, he giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our labours increase. To added afflictions, he adds his mercy. To multiplied trials, he multiplies peace. Calling to God for his mercy is woven into the prayers of the church. That same plea is embedded in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Or forgive us our sins as we forgive them that sin against us. All these versions include that reciprocity, that balance that our forgiveness is closely bound into and dependent on the way we relate to others. Our need for mercy and forgiveness is embedded throughout the Bible and our prayers and also our culture. Shakespeare echoes Jesus in The Merchant of Venice where Portia pleads for Bassanio's life saying, the quality of mercy is not strained it droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. 
it is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. It is an attribute of God himself. And earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. Consider this, that in the course of justice, none of us should see salvation. We do pray for mercy, and that same prayer doth teach us all to render the deeds of mercy. The second definition of mercy offered by the dictionary goes as follows. A mercy is an event to be grateful for, especially because its occurrence prevents something unpleasant or provides relief from suffering. It's a mercy, we might say. As the French say, thank you, merci. It seems that our own capacity to be thankful is an integral part of our ability to receive and show mercy. This is demonstrated in Jesus' teaching throughout his ministry, both by his example and through the parables and by his direct instruction. In Luke 6, verse 36, he tells us, Love your enemies, do good to them, and lend them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father in heaven is also merciful. In Luke 18, verse 13, in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, Jesus commends the tax collector for his words, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The man calls out for mercy, but also confesses his sinfulness. It is because this man, in contrast to the Pharisee, knows that he is at fault, that he is able to receive God's mercy. In Matthew 9, verse 13, Jesus teaches, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Spoken when the Pharisees criticised Jesus for the company he kept, for eating with sinners and tax collectors. In Matthew 12, verse 7, we find Jesus quoting exactly the same words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. When yet again the Pharisees criticise him for allowing his hungry disciples to pick and eat some ears of corn on the Sabbath, he goes on to say, if you had known what these words mean, you would not have condemned the innocent. Jesus is quoting from Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6, I desire mercy not sacrifice. Using words which would surely in themselves have brought the story of Hosea's repeated forgiveness and mercy to his wife back to his listeners. To be merciful requires the one showing mercy to be sufficiently self-aware to know their own faults. As Jesus demonstrated when he encountered the woman taken in adultery, and her accusers. More than once during our Worship from Home reflections, we have thought about this story. Jesus' wisdom in dealing with this incident demonstrates that those who were accusing the woman and were anything but merciful found, when Jesus directed their attention to their own shortcomings, a change of perception, a move away from judgment and towards mercy through a sense of their own sinfulness. It was Jesus' presence that the change of heart occurred. We cry to God for mercy when we are most vulnerable, but perhaps it is equally important to take ourselves into his presence when we feel most certain that we have right on our side. As in the Lord's Prayer, we must first acknowledge and ask for forgiveness for our own sin, 
which then enables us to find it in our hearts to forgive others. One does not come without the other. In the parable of the unmerciful servant, which is Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35, we find a hard story. We see the master acting with mercy, but the man whose huge debt was forgiven was un unable to reciprocate that mercy to a fellow servant who owed him a small debt. This man did not demonstrate thankfulness for the mercy that he had been shown. He interrupted the flow of mercy from one to another, and in the end, he himself suffered. My sense of this is not so much that God is waiting to wreak retribution on us, but that when we fail to forgive one another, it damages something within ourselves. That harms us more than anyone else. It prevents us from receiving God's mercy, the mercy that is there for all of us. In contrast, the parable of the Good Samaritan, of course, demonstrates the beauty and virtue of the Samaritan's goodness and mercy, his ability to empathize with the injured man, but also the lack of mercy of the priest and the Levite, those who passed by on the other side. Theirs were sins of omission. I would like to share a prayer I have known since childhood. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. I began with the thought that to be merciful requires the one showing mercy to be able to put themselves into another's shoes, to feel empathy for the other. Of course, the greatest giving and receiving of mercy is God's mercy to us through Jesus giving his life on the cross for us. God in his mercy has seen the plight of humanity. He has heard our prayers and our cries. Through the incarnation, he has become man. He has walked in our shoes and paid our debt with his life on the cross. Our response must be to acknowledge our sinful need of that mercy and to accept his gift with thankful hearts. God's mercy is love in action. Let's share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.